In this particular section, we're doing combinations of ob objects. Uh, yesterday, you did permutations. 10.1 was permutations. We had a different formula yesterday, NPR, NPR, N factorial, N minus R factorial. We're bringing in a new formula today. You'll want your calculator again. And I also gave you Pascal's triangle, so I want you to have that out and handy. Have your cheat sheet out and handy so you can add stuff to your final sheet as well. So definition for a combination is a selection of R objects taken from a group of N total where this time the order does not matter. Order does not matter. So here you're thinking about a group of things. It doesn't matter how the group is put together. The order does not matter. In a permutation, the order did matter. Placement was very important. You could only be first. You couldn't get first and third in the same race. That was a permutation from yesterday. Today is combination order does not matter. Our notation this time is NCR. And the formula is N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. So I'm going to show you how we could do this by hand. And then we'll bring it up on our calculator. And I'll also show you how you can use Pascal's triangle. We're going to try this simple example, 8C3. So I've got eight objects, and I'm going to put three of them in a group. I want to know how many ways I could do that. According to the formula, it would be 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial times another 3 factorial. 8 factorial, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 3 factorial is 3, 2, 1. So now I can start reducing to make this easier. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 cancels out 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, cancels with that 6. I'm left with 8 times 7. My answer should be 56, 56. All right, now let's try this on our calculator. Go to your second button again. Second. Line this up a bit so I can see it. Second, distribution, arrow over, sorry, wrong one. Second, go to your math button, math button, arrow over three times to probability. Now we're going to take choice number three. So if you look at choice number three, that's your uh, NCR button. Now, if you have an older calculator, you would have had to have typed the number 8 first. I have a newer one, so I can type my 8 here. And then 8C3, hit Enter, and there would be my answer of 56. If you have an older calculator, make sure you type the 8 first. Then go to your math button, choice number 3, and then type your 3 and then you'll come up with your answer again, 56. Okay, now let me show you how to do your Pascal's triangle. We're trying to find 8C3. So 8 means to, this total number right here, means to go to row 8 on your Pascal's triangle. You can go either down the right-hand side or the left-hand side. The uh, rows are symmetric either way. So if you look on the right-hand side, it lists the rows for you. So go down to row 8, and now we're supposed to be grouping this three at a time. Here's the one key you have to remember when you're using Pascal's triangle. The first little honeycomb shape where the number 1 is on the inside, that is 0 when you count. So when you're counting over to the left on your honeycombs, you're going to start counting with 0, 1, 2, 3, and then you should be in the honeycomb that's got 56 for the answer. Now you could actually start from the left-hand side as well. So if you go down to row 8 and then start counting with 0, 1, 2, 3, you also get the same answer of 56. Okay, so you're going to be able to use this Pascal's triangle to help you. It's just a little shortcut version. Any of your NCR values that have a total of 13 or less, you'll be able to use that on your calculator, or use that with your Pascal's triangle. I do want you to notice that on the very bottom row of your, of your Pascal's triangle, the number 186 should be crossed off. It's actually 286 that's in there. So make sure that's crossed off on both sides of the very bottom row, row 13. It should be the number 286 and not 186. 
All right, let's look at this question. We have 52 cards in a deck. How many different five-card hands are possible? When I hold those cards in my hand, it doesn't matter which card I have on the left, which card I have on the right. I could shuffle those five cards around in my hand, and it's still the same group of five cards. So this is a combination. My total is 52, and I'm grouping them five at a time in my hand. Now, 52 obviously is not on your Pascal's triangle, so now you're actually going to go to your calculator, type 52, NCR button, and then 5. Answers will be big here again for some of these card questions that you'll have in your book. 2,598,960. Second question, in how many five card hands are all five the same color? Now in a question like this, what we have to do first is decide which color we want. Once we have the color chosen, then of that color total, we will group five cards. So if you think about being in a deck of cards, we either have red cards or black cards, that's two different colors. So I have two colors, and of those two colors, I need to choose one of them. That one color, all being the same color, that's the first thing. And then I have to pick out my five cards. And means multiply when you're dealing with probability. And means multiply. So I have two colors, I pick one color. Once I'm in that one color, there are 26 cards of that color, and I need five of them to be in my hand. So I will be punching in two, choose one, two C1, times 26 C5. Two C1 is just two. 26 C5, when you punch this in your calculator, you should get 65,780. And then we're going to take that times 2. 131,560. In how many five card hands are all five red? Now in this particular question, the color has already been chosen. So we do not need to do this first piece where there are two colors and pick one color. The color has already been chosen for us. They have to be red cards. So I'm going to go right to the fact that I know that there are 26 red cards in my deck, and I will choose five of them. And that answer we saw from up above, 65780, 65,780. Next question. I have 10 books. Five are fiction, five are nonfiction. If order is not important, how many different sets of four books can they choose? Order is not important. I just want four books in my group. Ten total. Choose four. Ten choose four. You could use your Pascal's triangle now. Go to row ten. Start counting with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. Did you end, end on 210? A little shortcut version of using the C and CR value without having to go to your calculator. How many groups of four can I make if all are of the same genre? All right, so I had two different genres of books here. I had fiction and, and nonfiction. So just like with the card question, I have two genres. I need to pick a genre first. Once I'm in that genre, then I can choose how many books I want of each individual genre. And this kind of a question only works if it's a matching five and five or with the card questions, 26 red, 26 black. This one has five, and I'm going to put four of them in my group, 5C4. So I have 2C1 times 5C4. You can use your triangle again. 2C1 is 2, and 5 choose 4 is 5. Answer is 10. 10 different groups that I could put together. Student Senate consists of six seniors, five juniors, four sophomores, and three freshmen. How many different committees of exactly two seniors and two juniors can be chosen? There's that word and again. I need to do a multiplication there. So I have seniors, and I'm only going to choose two of them. Six seniors total. Six C2. Times by juniors, I have five juniors total, and I'm going to choose two of them. 6C2 times 5C2. You can use your triangle. 
should be 15 times 10, 150. How many committees of four students can be formed? doesn't say anything about which class they're going to be. It's just going to be committees of four students. So I need to know how many total I have up here. I believe there's 18 total students, and of those total students, I want four to be in my committee. So it'll be 18C4. Punch that in your calculator, see what you come up with. I actually don't have an answer written down here, so we'll just trust yourself that you're coming up with the correct answer on your calculator. Now this next one. How many committees of at most four students can be formed? Here's one of these special inequalities, at most. That means I could come up to and include four, but can't have more than four kids. But it could be any one of those numbers leading up to that. So maybe I have four kids in my group. Maybe there's only three kids. Maybe there's two in the committee. Maybe there's one person on the committee. But maybe I have 18 kids, and I don't want any of them to be in the committee. So I have all of those choices that I need to put together. So it's 18 choose four kids. Now here I'm using the word or. When I have the word or with probability and uh, in this entire chapter, it means plus. And means multiply, but or means plus. So I have 18C4 plus, I could have three people on the committee, or plus, I could have two on the committee, I could have one person in the committee, and maybe this weird case of, I don't want anybody to be on the committee. I need to calculate each of those numbers, and then add them all together. Okay, so go ahead, put this on pause, I'll let you do all your calculating, and you should come up with this correct answer, I hope. that I could put together of at most four students. Here's a, just a simple question. Let's use your Pascal's triangle. Make sure we're all okay with that. Seven baseball caps and I trade three of them. How many combinations of three can I trade? Seven, C, three. Go to your triangle. Seven and count over. Zero, one, two, three. This would be a type of a question you could see on a non-calculator page to a test as well. 7 factorial, 7 minus 3 factorial over uh, times 3 factorial. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7 minus 3 is 4 factorial, 3 factorial, and then you start reducing. 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1 is 6. Take out the 6. 7 times 5 is left over 35. Binomial expansion. This is one of the biggest ways that we're going to use Pascal's triangle to help us. Now, we have actually done the expansion of x plus 2 to the third power. We've already done this before. Does this ring any bells? 1331. 3, 3, 1. This is an expansion. So, go to your Pascal's triangle for a second. If you are doing x plus 2 to the third, look at row 3. What are the numbers you see in row 3? Look at that, 1, 3, 3, 1. We will be able to use Pascal's triangle to help us expand binomials like this, and they're going to get bigger, and we can use our triangle to help us with even the big ones. All right, so let's finish this to remind ourselves what we're doing. 1, 3, 3, 1. Now I take the first term, x to the third, and go right down the line one degree less x to the second, x to the first, no x term. Then I use the number in the back, 2, start in the back, 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the first, and no 2 term. I have a plus sign in the middle, which means all of my terms are plus, and now I just clean it up. x to the third plus 3 times 2, 6x squared, plus 4 times 3, 12x plus 2 cubed, 8. There's my expansion. So let's try that with some bigger values. x plus y to the 6. 
Go to your Pascal's triangle. Look at the numbers in row 6. 1, 6, 15, 20, and then down again, 15, 6, 1. I might run out of room. Start with your number in the front. x to the 6th, x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x to the 2nd, x to the 1st, no x term in the back. Now put your y starting in the back, y to the 6th, y to the 5th, y to the 4th, y to the 3rd, y to the 2nd, y to the 1st, no y term. I've got a plus sign, which means I have plus signs going all the way across. And I just did an expansion of x plus y to the 6th. If you forget how to do this expansion, you're going to have to try to do a whole, whole bunch of distributions and foils and put all those together. Please use this Pascal's triangle to help you with these expansions. Okay, we're going to do one more here. This one has a minus sign in it, and this one is to the 4th. Look at your triangle and look at the numbers in row 4. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Term in the front is A, A to the 4th, A to the 3rd, A to the 2nd, A to the 1st, no A term in the back. Term in the back is 2B, do not use this minus sign, I'm just looking at 2B, and I'm going to put that in the back, all of it, in parentheses since there's two things, 2B to the 4th. 2b to the third, 2b to the second, 2b, and then no 2b term in the front. The signs are now alternating. When you have a negative sign in the problem, that means they're going to alternate, starting with a plus sign in the front, minus, plus, minus, plus. And now I have to clean this up. a to the fourth, minus. 2 times 4 will be 8 a cubed b plus 2 squared is 4, 4 times 6 is 24, a squared b squared, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, I had a minus sign here, so 32, a b to the third, and 2 to the fourth, 16, b to the fourth. Your signs should alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And something else to watch for to make sure you have your powers correct. Each of the terms, the power should add up to give you a four, since we're doing an expansion on four. So this one is four. I'll do a different color here. Three and one is four. Two plus two is four. One plus three is four and then b to the fourth is 4. So we know we have all of our powers correct. All right, so there's an expansion for you, and I do believe that is it. Okay, so expansions, you definitely probably want to have a sample of that in your cheat sheet. Um, you'll obviously have questions on it in your homework. Um, your formula for um, NCR, put that on your cheat sheet. Where is my formula? Go back one more. There we go. Put this formula on your cheat sheet for sure. You will get to use Pascal's triangle on your test and on your QM test and in your final, so you won't have to um, copy that Pascal's triangle down at all. You'll get to use all of that. Okay, there you go. There's your end for section 10.2.